Hi guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you my September reading wrap up. Um, I think I've only really read three things just because I'm not including my books that I read for the a year -a I do have a separate wrap up for that if you're interested I'll link it around for you. I think I read two or three books in that reading wrap up and then I read a couple of more um, throughout the month of September. However these are pretty much all graphic novels I'm pretty sure and I think they were all like e-copies like e-arcs so here's my thoughts on some newly to be released books I suppose I got them all from NetGalley by the way so you know it was free but I think majority of them were like free to read now um so you just literally clicked it and it downloaded but you know my opinions always stay honest as whatever as per usual I think I was trying to say so the first of those graphic novels is a little novel for children it's like a little illustrated book called the little red wolf by emily flechalis oh god flechalis i don't know i think it's french so do excuse me on my pronunciation i know it's dire i don't know how to pronounce it but i tried and i'm sorry if i butchered it apparently this is set to be published on the 3rd of october of 2017 and it's basically like little red riding hood obviously but as a wolf um, and so the little wolf is told to be cautious and stare away from the evil um, woodcutter father and daughter so one day he is told to go to his grandmother's it's basically exactly the same layout but with a wolf instead um, so it kind of twists your mind in terms of perspective and thinking oh wow okay this is interesting um, so he's told to take like a rabbit to his sick grandmother because she's lost all her teeth now and she can't hunt on her own so she'll die basically if she's not fed given food strays and gets away from the path and it's basically that story but it has its own little morals and such throughout it which is quite unique and I, I ended up giving this a four out of five stars i really like the art style i liked how like it had like layers of different textures over each other like you'll need to see it to kind of understand what i mean but i just like the depth of it and the different textures it was really really beautiful and it had a lot of detail for a young children's book which is nice because i think it makes them stare at it longer and basically capture the essence of the story and everything rather than the simplicity which is also nice of some other illustrated children's books this one kind of grips you a bit more it makes you want to stare at the page for longer and kind of read over it again it's kind of cute that the dead rabbits didn't look gruesomely they they just looked like they were sleeping which again obviously it's a children's book so they can't scare you too much but it looked really sweet in saying that though the woodcutter's uh, daughter looked quite evil and menacing and quite creepy um, but that's a bit of a contrast there <laughs> I found it to be a really sweet and kind of melancholy story the way it was written obviously it's a very familiar tale but it is different in the fact that it's about a wolf and it does have a slight difference to the story particularly near the end and um, it, it's its own thing which is quite nice the ending really did capture me by surprise and it kind of left me feeling really down <laughs> it is a quick read obviously being heavily illustrated with little words and um, it being a children's book again it's not the longest thing but it's something i would actually love to have in my collection but in saying that i can't remember the exact price but it's pretty expensive so i'm not sure if i'd actively go out and buy it for myself um perhaps if i had children in the future or something i might fork out and get it because it is very beautiful and it's a very sweet story um but i don't know right now if i'd get it for myself I would recommend it though. Okay, so another graphic novel that I read um, is more for, I guess, a YA audience. It's called Taproot. And then some editions of it have like an extended name, um, which is a story about a gardener and a ghost. So I did give this a three stars. So I think this came out on the 26th of September, so not too long ago at all. A decent little story. Um, I thought the art style was really cute. Um, it was an interesting story. A little bit odd because of the love relationship in here was between like a supernatural entity and you know the story underlined says you know a, a, a story about a ghost and a gardener basically that's the relationship and it's a bit odd <laughs> but it gets quite beautiful and it is a really sweet story my one issue with this is that it wasn't fleshed out enough and i understand it is a graphic novel they tend to have a quicker pacing and they don't have a lot of time to work with and stuff i, I understand that but it was it was strange because it wasn't exactly fast paced for the majority of it but it wasn't slow paced but at the same time I felt like I don't know it was just a bit of a weird feel to it um, in terms of that I don't really know how to put that across eloquently <laughs> although the art style isn't my favourite I thought it was really cute I really liked it it does have a beautiful colour palette which is something that definitely drew my attention and got me like looking at it more because it was very I describe it almost as watery looking which is really pretty heavily influenced on shades of green and blue and such which makes sense because you know 
the ghosts and that is blue and death and that and also the life of the gardens green and vibrant do you know what i mean so it balances each other nicely and the last book and graphic novel that i read during september is generations by flavia biondi or biondi i'm not sure how to pronounce it i think she's italian um so again i do apologize if i can't pronounce the name properly so this one is due to come out on the 10th of october 2017 and it's an interesting one it's got a lot of depth to it so I think it'll be better if I read to you the synopsis, which I don't. I tried not to do oftentimes because it's better to kind of reiterate what you mean so you can put it in your own words, but for this one, I definitely need to. So after three years in Milan, Matteo returns home to the provin... provin I can't say that. Provincial country town where he was born and from, he, and from which he fled. Um, coming out as a young gay man in a provincial country town had led to ugly clashes with his conservative father and the urban metropolis of um, Milan had been a welcome change from the stifling small town life of his childhood and the anger and bewilderment of some members of his family. But now Matteo finds himself with little choice but to return home with no money, no job and an uncertain future like so many other young people of his millennial generation. Afraid of, his, of encountering his estranged father, he instead takes refuge with his extended family at a house shared by his grandmother, three aunts and his very pregnant cousin. As he tries to rebuild his life, reconnecting with the women of his family and old hometown friends, he warily confronts a few truths about the other generations of his family, from the bigotry to their love and tolerance and acceptance, and a few truths about himself, including his fears and confrontation of confrontation and commitment. So I was immediately drawn to that one because it sounded like, especially for a graphic novel, a really emotional one and I was expecting it to be so. So I won't go into the depth of my review here. I do have a review written on Goodreads and on NetGalley as well as usual if you want to read them. My Goodreads link is always linked down in the description. Um, but this is definitely one of the most moving graphic novels I've ever read. I gave it a four stars but um, it, it was a really good read. So as you can imagine from the title it's heavily centred on this theme of generations and kind of how they react to Matteo as being a young gay millennial um, and how the different obviously different generations view him and how they respect him and treat him as a family member and as friends and again you've got that kind of glimpse at between countries and how they view different things and the, the term of modernization such like that. We mainly do follow Matteo, he is our main character but through his eyes we glimpse into the lives of his aunties, his, his cousin, his dad, his nan and we see their views as well in how he responds to them if that makes sense. The only reason I'd say that I didn't give it a five star is because a lot of the time I found myself um, just not connecting to the location of where the story was set and I think it's just because I've never been to Milan and I've never been to Italy and I don't know much about them geographically so it just for me felt a little bit stunted in those times when they were describing things or they just had a little bit of maybe a cultural mention and I, I wouldn't understand and that's entirely my fault I know it might seem a bit harsh to diminish a star because of that but it affected my reading experience you know so I thought it was fair enough but generally I really did enjoy the story as I mentioned already the most moving graphic novel I've ever read it was beautiful and it has some really nice um, morals and themes that I think are important to read um, so yeah that's it in terms of all the books that I read. Again, I've got the A Year of Fun reading wrap up if you do want to check out the other stuff that I read for the beginning of the month. Um, just quickly, I want to mention that I'm currently reading two books actively. I think generally I'm reading like five books or four books or something and actual actively I'm reading two books and one of them is Frog Kisser by Garth Nix. I think I'm about 120 pages or so into that now and it's, it's good, it's good. It's just... I, not what I was expecting it's a lot for a middle grade read it's, it's quite small print and I don't know thin pages so I think it would actually be like a, maybe a 500 page book if it was like printed a bit bigger um, so but yeah I'm enjoying that so far and I've also recently picked up another read now for NetGalley graphic novel um, and that is Lighter Than My Shadow. I can't remember the author's name um, but for, from what I can remember it's like her memoir. She's a author and illustrator and it's a memoir of her life growing up with eating problems, um, eating disorders and such. Um, I've not got too far into that 
just yet i think it's like a 500 page graphic novel as well so it might be a slow going one especially because i'm reading it on my computer so it's not i don't really like to do that for a long period of time because it gives me migraines so it's quite interesting so i'm excited to see how that goes along the way it might be a bit of an emotional one so anyway that is it for this video thank you so much for watching let me know what you've been reading this month or last month i guess now in september and um, what you hope to read perhaps in october if you've got any halloweeny themed books or like just horrors or something that'd be exciting um, but for now i shall speak to you in the video soon bye